right, listeners, welcome to this uh, next episode of Blood Matters, a podcast for nurses. Um, Michelle and I are coming to you from the back of annual meeting 2023. And uh, I mean, how are you doing, Michelle? Because that was intense and, and really cool and exciting. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. My head's full, uh, uh, actually, uh-huh. full of uh, lots of exciting ideas, uh, incredible memories and moments. And uh, yeah, just I'm processing today, I think. Yeah, I feel that massively. I, I mean, that was my first face to face annual meeting. It's huge. It's it's I mean, color me speechless and and the folks that have listened to me a couple of times know that speechless is not something that is my usual but for anyone who's not been to a face-to-face go is what I would say and we're probably gonna you'll probably find that's the theme from the podcast today but what's it what was it like getting back sort of face-to-face because that is this the first time we've been back face-to-face since the pandemic yeah so the last face-to-face meeting was in 2019 wow and um you know for those people who have been before in person well certainly for me it just felt like coming home again um I like that you know really being um you know all that you wanted it to be and more you know really until the the meeting we didn't know how many nurse registrations or how many overall registrations uh, there would be. And, uh, you know, we had as good a turnout as we had in 2019, plus some people who uh, uh, joined and registered uh, online for the virtual element. So um, so that was amazing. There was just an, an incredible buzz really right from the first moment until we closed our uh, our nurses uh, program so yeah you know just eat full yeah really yeah. full I, I, I mean I didn't I didn't see an empty room like a half filled room you know every every session I sat in on was full um with people you know sort of trying to find somewhere to sit um perched at the back trying not to disturb right when they when they were trying to find a seat so you know, the, I don't know how many we had online, but I there was definitely a good representation of nurses, wasn't there? Yeah. This time yeah. around, like it, it was so good to see people. And and what about for yourself? Like I'm I'm quite new to to sort of meeting all the folks, um, involved in nurses group in EBMT. But for you, was it nice seeing people back face to face? Oh, you know, every day of the week, honestly, you know, it is. Um, it gives you uh, like an extra energy and, uh, you know, uh, everybody, it all kind of feeds into the whole atmosphere of the of the meeting and, and the programme and, you know, that that energy, you know, you can't capture that um, in in any other way. And of course, you know, we have amazing opportunities with with e-learning and uh, and online conferences and meetings and, you know, for those people for whom it really isn't possible to access that education any other way, then that's a, a real place to go. But, you know, the stuff that you get and the stuff that you feel and the emotion that you feel um, that, that you know, stays with you long after the meeting has finished. Um, yeah, you can't bottle that. I know the the term is networking, but it's so much more than that. And and I I was looking around at everybody's name badge to see where they were from, and you know, representation was 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 very international. You can't underestimate that. I saw Australia, New Zealand, uh, the Latin Americas. Yeah. I saw people from all over the world. You know that it's so nice that people can get together in a in a setting like this. So for for anybody that's new to the podcast, uh, especially those that have joined up with listening since we we um, promoted it a bit quite a lot at, at conference, um, thanks very much for joining us. Today's setup will be a little bit different. We normally kind of have a slightly more structured setting in terms of interviewing the experts and um sort of teasing out some some really interesting themes but this time we're we're having a more of a a fireside chat with with three people that were um just so so good 
at annual meeting and and especially mentioning Thomas when we when we introduced everybody Thomas was the nurse representative for Paris where annual meeting was held and has done such an amazing job and then we've also got um Marek and Hilda um who we will get to introduce but um how 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 this will be will be a little bit different when you from usual and I'm quite looking forward to that relaxed I think Michelle, certainly you, you, you and you definitely need a, a relaxed podcast recording this time <laughs> after all the work you've put in as well. So um, just to let everybody in the audience know that it's going to be slightly different and we're going to tell you all the things that we loved about my annual meeting. And yes, we're going to promote you going. Um, so, Michelle, how are you feeling about just a slight change in construct today? You're looking forward to it. Yeah, fireside chat, no fire. You know, I'm, uh, True. I'm, I'm quite happy about that. You know, that's, uh, that's you know, suits me fine. No, I think it's going to be really lovely to have a bit more of a freeform chat around, uh, you know, as if we were sitting around a fire or or had a cup of coffee on the table or maybe even a glass of wine. Um, oh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have my cup of coffee. Nobody can see me right now, but I have my cup of coffee ready for my fireside chat no no fire like you say maybe one day we'll have you know fire marshmallows all of the above mulled wine don't know depends when we record the next fireside chat yeah. and maybe we'll be able to set one up in annual meeting in the future as an aspiration yeah but we might um not stress out the organizers too much by asking them to find us a fireplace on top of everything yeah. <laughs> There are plenty of fireplaces in Glasgow where we'll be for uh, oh, EVMG 2024. Oh, my home country. So for, for those that don't know, I live in Edinburgh, which is a 40 minute drive from Glasgow. Um, so I yeah, I, I will be um, pointing out all the best places to go for food and drink and tourism if you've got a little bit of extra time. And yeah, bring your raincoats because... Um, well, you might hear on a soundbite Lorna saying, Lorna from Glasgow saying that we have all four seasons in one day in Scotland quite frequently. So, um, but there'll be whiskey if you want it. Don't know if you're a whiskey fan, Michelle, but we have a lot of nice whiskey up here. Uh, I can drink whiskey. I can drink whiskey. Excellent. And for anyone else listening, if you need some recommendations, just ask me. I will be quite happy to tell you where to get some good ones. There's actually a couple of, um, distilleries like 30 minutes outside of Glasgow up in the in the Loch Lomans all right well we will introduce our guests just shortly so hi guys welcome to the podcast oh we've got three wonderful guests today so first thing we're going to do is just let everybody introduce themselves um, and then we're going to dive straight into this fireside chat where we will be relaxed and we will chat about the, the things that we've enjoyed about annual meeting this year. So first of all, we have to introduce Thomas from Paris. I will, well, from Nantes, outside of Paris, but I will let you um, tell us a bit about yourself, Thomas. Hi, Emma. Uh, my name is Thomas. I am an advanced practice nurse at the University Hospital of Nantes in France, and I was lucky to be the local nurse for this uh, EBMT annual meeting in Paris. And it was just amazing thank uh, you for yeah. all your work i think michelle's <laughs> nodding next to me well you can all see this time around because we're recording it this way great okay well we'll we'll get all of your thoughts about uh, annual meeting soon toma um next to toma on my screen certainly and everybody else's street screen we've got marik hello good morning I'm uh, Marek, uh, working as a clinical nurse specialist uh, at the uh, University Hospital in Ghent in Belgium. So uh, since uh, 2002, working in the area of hematology and transplantation, and already for four years at the EBMT Scientific Nursing Group. So it's really an honor to be here. And you've just taken on the chair of that, of that group, haven't you? Yes, we had wonderful people before, so now it's my uh, uh, way to go. So I'm very uh, glad that I had very nice examples, but I'm looking forward to uh, work with everybody and to work uh, within the EBMT community because it's a little bit like that. It's a family. Mm -hmm. It's a fam I, I get, guys, at some point today, I'm going to say 
teamwork makes the dream work because that apparently is when what I've said every single time we do a podcast so I'll, I'll bring that in later but you're right um, EBMT is 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 a big community so congratulations on your appointment thank um, you as the, as the lead and then our third but not certainly not least guest we've got Hilda hello nice to be here my name is Hilda Mekelekamp I work at the Leiden University Medical Center in Leiden the Netherlands and I work as a pediatric stem cell transplantation nurse and as a researcher and within EBMT I had a role of the chair of the pediatric nurses committee and the link nurse to the pediatric diseases working party it was really a pleasure to do that well thank you for being that chair and um Enjoy your relaxation now you've stepped down a little bit. Thanks so, <laughs> so much. Um, uh, thank you for joining us as well, Hilda. Um, and you're, first, you're the first pediatric nurse we've had as a guest on the podcast. You will not be the last, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say hi to Michelle. We've already had a chat this morning, but good morning again, Michelle. Morning from the UK. Sorry, I'm aware that it's not morning in the, in the, in the EU. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Emma, and uh, it's great to see you guys again so soon after we all left the annual meeting in Paris. How are we all feeling after annual meeting? Excited. Doing okay? Yeah, tired and excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, tired, I, I, excited. Tight. Cool. In equal measure, in equal measure, absolutely. Um, so as we've said before, this is not structured as we would normally do our podcast. We're going to sort of just talk about annual meeting. So um, I guess I'm just going to say what what we're we're going to let's talk about our favorite things about ABMT 2023 so far. Well, I would say so far, um, and actually. The sound bites will tell us some of the so far, but but we're finished now. So, what was your favorite thing about annual meeting this year, um, Hilda? What about you? What was your favorite thing? A favorite thing is quite a difficult question because I had a lot of favorite things. I must say so maybe i want to start with the opening session because we had really a nice opening session with the award winners of the the, the merit award and also the the other one, which was the name the. Honorary membership, yeah, that was really nice. But we also had two wonderful keynotes of Johan de Munter with the leadership mm. and Anne Pierre yeah. Picard about, uh, yeah, as a patient, uh, pers uh, a patient, what is her actually name? But, but it was really good to hear talking her about the equity and equality for patients' mm. care. It was really important to address mm. that aspect. And Michelle spoke French. It, it, well, I just think it's really striking the. Um, you know the disparities, the differences that uh, that are there through throughout the world, and you know I think it's uh, it's quite exciting that there is real attention being brought to that, and uh, and hopefully we will move towards a place where there is better equality. It doesn't just become a word, but it becomes an action and uh, and embedded within the the practices and and the way that we. Uh, look after patients. So I, I find that, although um, quite um, uh, uh, disappointing, I also find it quite exciting that we're we're bringing attention to that. And and you, Hanta Munter, I completely agree with you, Hilda. You know, and you know the the uh the way he spoke about leadership and as a leader um and you know a role model for for many of us um he uh he really brought that to life and said some things that we can all really relate to uh in our own situations and um you know he's um he's a hematology nurse by in his heart um and so i think that's something that we can all really identify with so um yes we were very fortunate to have such fantastic keynote speakers and you know and brilliant topics so yeah i was i was also very happy with the with the opening mm -hmm. and, tamar did you did you um do you have any favorites tamar you you would have been um well, crazy busy I <laughs> 
like everybody, I think, um, well, it's, it's also difficult to choose what I like the best because each session had its own interest. And um, I really enjoyed the pediatric sessions, but probably because I am an uh, advanced practice nurse in pediatric. Mm -hmm. um, the sessions were very, <laughs> <laughs> the session were very interesting and I particularly liked the question of nutritional support. I mean, it's very useful for daily practice and also patients testimony and thank you Hilda for bringing that to us um, but I also really enjoyed the next generation uh, session with um, Julia or Julia Lydia and Ross they were uh, incredibly inspiring and a very nice talk from Ross I really agree with you also Julia and Lydia showed their leadership and uh, in their talks and they applied all they all asked us to step a bit, a bit forward and to let our first voices be heard. And it's really important for mm -hmm. us as nurses to do so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marek, what about yourself? How, did, how what was your? Oh, it, well, it, it's <laughs> a you very difficult one. question, but just I want to mention, as Michelle said to us, it were all very nice talks, but also with the heart. And I think that's so important and that you could so feel after those three years of digital um, EBMT annual meeting that people were there, they, they attended the meetings, they were very active, it was involving. So I think that was, that I really appreciated uh, this year and uh, yeah, of course, a lot of sessions, so it's, it's, it's very difficult, but I think we had like uh, nice overviews of different things like uh, um, Valentin from, from Switzerland, like, uh, okay, ambulatory care, a lot of uh, centers are struggling, uh, uh, shortage of beds, are we going to ambulatory care or not? Uh, some are doing already for a long time. And so it was a very nice overview about that ambulatory care with, with um, uh, the, the lecture. Also, um, uh, cell collection, about cell collection. It was a really nice topic about um, Annika Kish, uh, a collection a lot, but also about the patient who's uh, a doctor. But is, it was also very... Um, it was not only about knowledge, it was really very emotional. It was a very touching presentation. Also, okay, are we doing our care good or their care gaps uh, about our donors? So it was, it, was, it was terrific, but it was touching also on the other hand. So that was nice. Hmm. Agreed. This, you, you, the heart, exactly that, the heart in the, in the talks. I don't think there's a single person that presented that didn't sort of showcase their absolute passion for what they do um I loved the the session that Orla McCourt gave on um prehabilitation prior to stem cell transplantation I think that that's something that is the next sort of <clears throat> I mean we've been talking about it for a while haven't we but I think it's the next sort of big push in what we do and and getting people fit for this pretty horrendously intense intervention so um i i have a personal passion for prehabilitation and think that that's just something that every single patient who's going to go through something big should get so it's really great to see that um and then just there's so much laughter as well isn't there you know if you think about Dan's session on the last day we all just giggled our way through a conversation around again, intensive treatments and things like, you know, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, et cetera, but nobody was sitting there kind of, there was no morbidity. There was no sort of miserable sort of, this is really heavy and hard to do. And patients, you know, it's a serious topic, but it's good to be able to bring in some smiles, I think as well. Um, so for me, that, that those were probably some of my favorite, favorite sessions. Um, and I think that hopefully we're showing people that you can come along and, and it's not just about the goodies that you get from the vendors. The coffee was rather tasty, though, I have to say, quite appreciated getting coffee throughout the day. But um, yeah, you get so much from this, don't you? Mm. Um, well, I've got questions, I've got more questions. Michelle, I don't know, um, you want to jump in with any questions before I start picking more brains? Carry yeah, on. Yeah, I guess I just, um, just in terms of highlights, really, um, you know, probably share 
share some of mine. I think, um, you know, I loved everything that that I saw and everything that that I was able to be at. I hadn't realized uh, how, from my perspective, it would be a little more difficult this year to sit in through whole sessions. So I missed a lot of stuff. And so I'm hugely grateful that there's going to be an opportunity to catch up with all of those sessions, watch my colleagues and peers uh, and our, our guest speakers uh, do their thing. So I get to experience a little bit more of what you guys have experienced through the meeting. I was fortunate to be able to sit in on some sessions and the quality of what was shared uh, and also the way our audiences really showed up to the sessions uh, that really contributed to uh, that sense of uh, collaboration and community that we got from the meeting this year that we, of course, have missed during the pandemic. Um, I was uh, I was fortunate to be able to uh, sit in on a panel discussion with the trainee committee on uh, morbidity and mortality. And I wasn't really quite sure what to expect, but um, I was uh, joined by uh, rock stars, uh, Helen Shermans and Chris Lewis, who's an amazing patient representative and patient advocate. Um, and so uh, we listened to a couple of case presentations, uh, which were presented by trainees, uh, difficult cases, uh, lots of dilemma and food for thought within that. Um, and my role was, was really to consider the perspective of those cases from my experience and my standing and the, my eyes as a nurse. And there was something really special about that, to be able to talk to, you know, our next and future medical leaders uh with a patient with another uh with another doctor uh who is clearly senior and respected in the field in my role uh, and then share my role as a nurse so i um i did really enjoy that you know from both a kind of participant uh and also um as a kind of panel uh guest and you can't not go to these sessions and learn such a lot you know uh, we can be very experienced in our in our practice but every single time I sit in and listen to a talk even one of our basic sessions on blood counts or whatever uh, and our advanced sessions you know when we're talking about leadership or listening to the best uh, abstracts being presented in our several categories or be a panel member in a in a discussion like that you can't not learn something uh, and for me that's that's a highlight you know always leaving a room a group of people that I've spoken to and learning something and um I think I'm pretty sure did all of you chair at some point um some of the sessions like that I uh, having that kind of on top of trying just just being there to do the learning that's that's intense so hats off to you all I got to just enjoy it from the audience and um sort of sit in my wee corner and ask my wee questions when I could so so well done for for a chair for a chairing Thomas you did a whole day at one point <laughs> did you not you know yes during the educational day with categories uh it was a, a very it was challenging, but it was a very nice experience. Good. So, so we'll tell everybody for Glasgow next year that it's actually okay and that we can do it. Yeah, do yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, can you just introduce yourself and tell me where you work? So, my name is Ailey Neil. I'm post transplant CNS um, based in Sheffield in the UK. Fabulous. And what are you planning to take back to Sheffield from annual conference this year? I just think I want to take the buzz back that you get from meetings that you are here with people you're um, brainstorming stuff you get brain waves popping into your head you scribble things in the back of your notebook um, and 
Um, yeah, it's a great, and I think that the power of the nurse, I think we're still underrated and we're still um, not listened to enough. And I think just the power of the nurse and our, our brilliance is what I will take back and just plugging it a bit more. Go nurses. Thank you so much, Aileen. So what are we taking back to the areas that we work in, in terms of evidence, changes in practice, um, education things? I mean, as my, I'm an educator, so I will be going back and probably putting together a number of leaflets and posters and, and videos and saying, this was really cool, guys. So um, what what do you guys want to take back to, to where you work? Um, anybody feel free to jump in. I, if I can, I just of remember course, the, the last uh, session, uh, the, it was really very um, excited. Everybody was still after four days of Congress, everybody was still alive, was very um, attentive. And so about cellular therapy, it's, yes. uh, it's really, you, you said already with Dan Dirix, it was laughing, but also it was a very difficult topic. And that is so nice at EBMT you get, uh, they explain difficult topics, but in a way you can take it with you. Um, so that was for me bites. Yeah, I remember a lot of nurses, they say, what is a bite? If you don't use them in your hospital or you are yeah. a smaller hospital. So it's really important as a hematology stem cell nurse, we are so fast evolving there you can, get your question do you you can ask question what's a bite what's car t how does it work so you have the opportunity to get it explained and to take it with you and also a little bit what i take with me uh, the title of um, uh, tessa Kere, the the future is bright for bites yes so i think that's also something you take with you and that was something nice because you see a lot of patients with bites and that okay so sometimes quotes say more than a whole presentation and, the, and that last slide of Dan's that had the bike the bikes and the bites and the trucks and the yeah. trikes and the amazing I, yeah that that definitely one and I actually had said to Michelle already I think we should do a podcast on those kinds of treatments and do you know maybe do a session bring in Dan and and, and Tessa and have a look at bites trikes trucks yeah. Planes, I don't know what we're going to have next, but yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but we also, I guess that also plays in a little bit to the joint pharmacy session that uh, that we had where, um, you know, we had a, a talk that uh, went through basically how you get new drugs from bench to bedside. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of the costs of the new drugs that are coming through are so high that you know currently there are some patients who won't be able to access yeah. those those exciting innovations and treatments and so again that that then plays on also then to the uh equity of yeah. uh, of of that um and so we kind of you know we go from kind of an advanced therapy session you know, we're thinking about all the exciting innovations and um, uh, developments of the future that are really going to be transformational for some yeah. patients' lives. And and then we we sit in a session where, you know, there's a bit more of, of the reality chiming in, you know, and, and enables us to remember, you know, that even when these uh, these drugs have been manufactured, and, uh, and they're being used in clinical trials and offered to our patients and providing, you know, incredible hope and, and great results. We still have to overcome the fact that they cost money and, uh, and how, we, how we deliver those in, in our real world, you know, not just our real worlds in Europe, but, you know, patients living in uh, LMICs. Absolutely, yeah. It that you get the excited, you know, how cool is this? It's really amazing. But then, yeah, reality hits home a little differently, doesn't it? Um, Tamar, what about yourself? I mean, do you remember anything after yeah. being <laughs> for the whole time? Is there anything you want to tell, tell the nurses and nuns? Well, um, the GVHD session was uh, pretty appreciable for me. Um, but 
um, also uh, new practices and um, the desire to invest in uh, research. And in fact, I was with a um, few colleagues and as I left, they shared with me their desire to get more involved in research programs. Well, <laughs> yeah, yay. definitely a, a huge yay. And uh, also a work with um, evidence-based practice. So for me, this kind of feedback, you know, it's uh, like, uh, okay, um, the goal is uh, achieve. I don't know if it's a good English translation, but... <laughs> Oh, you're grand. You're grand. Well, yeah, I I equally. That. Yeah, my uh, we had uh, quite a, a few nurses uh, from my hospital uh, there and they also equally inspired by um, by the meeting and and what they learned and what they were able to see mm. and feel a part of during mm. uh, during the meeting. Mm. Uh, we had a poster. Uh, yeah. in the uh, in the poster area and it was you know it was it was really nice it looked great on the screen uh, yes and it's so great to be able to celebrate the achievements of your team uh, and you know and and share a little bit in that uh, so that was all really nice you know I think that we saw so much uh, I think we can do probably a kind of VBMT highlights uh kind of little mini uh session back yeah. uh at the hospital where i work um because you know there's so much that uh we can share with the people that weren't able to be at the congress and that that yeah that's the point isn't it you don't go there to learn and then go away in isolation and not take anything back and um in terms of getting involved we'll maybe drop some hints about the things that people can do but I do want to give a Hilda. Give what about yourself? You, you what are you taking back to to Leiden? Yeah, in line with Thomas and Michelle, I would say it, it it would be nice to share some of the sessions with my colleagues when back home. That's just particular sessions. But in general, uh, I was thinking my research is focused on decision making, but specifically decision making for stem cell transplant. Transplant. So prior to transplant, and then hearing all the input, I thought it would be good to involve patients far more than we now do yeah. and using the decision making methods so probably for example you can we can talk about with patients about nutrition possibilities before transplant like um, these are the possibilities uh, nasogastric tubes uh, gastrostomy tubes the parenteral feeding and these are the pros cons and what are your preferences that's one example but uh, another example is uh, the pill swallowing what uh, some uh, colleagues of Newcastle brought up um, it's a method we can teach young patients and we can empower them to empower them to swallow pills instead of taking liquids by the nasogastric tubes and so they are able to remove their nasogastric tubes early. And that are also topics which we can discuss up front a little bit earlier, but also discharge planning. We can talk about that up front and take them, take the preferences of the patients into account very early. So I think not only these three examples guys, but a lot of them we can involve a bit more. And that's a big achievement. I think from search meetings as EBMT, then you get inspired and you can think about it about all these things yourself and bring it to a higher level at the end. Yeah, I mean, I, as an adult nurse, you know, you don't even consider that pill taking is a difficulty. And then I'm thinking back to to being a kid and being like, I wouldn't have, if you did handed me a pill, I'd have said, I can't take that, you know. Yeah. So the, even the simplest interventions that you can take back to, to help. But yeah, well, yeah, this is why I love working with you guys because I, mm -hmm. I don't know things about pediatric nursing and I can learn every time I do this. But for me, it was um, also a challenging out of the book thinking idea yeah. that these colleagues brought up. And that's what I like from EBMT, that people have out of the box ideas sharing with all the others. And that's what I like so most. Mm -hmm. Bringing that passion back in again, out of the box, passionate ideas. Definitely. Um, Hello, can you just tell me who you are and where you work? Hi, Emma. My name's Lorna, and I am uh, working in Glasgow. I'm the nurse specialist there in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. So we're coming to Glasgow next year for annual meeting. What's been your favourite thing about this year's annual meeting, though? It's just been full on, full of lots of ed educational events, lots of networking, meeting lots and lots of new colleagues um, in the UK and in Europe. So, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Agreed, same. And is there something you plan to take back to your area from annual conference to share with your colleagues? 
Yes, I hope to. Um, I think part of EBMT is taking what you've learnt here and sharing it with the colleagues to improve patient care. So, you know, I do, you know, there's a few issues that I've found very interesting that I hope to, to go back and do some educational events in the local hospital. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lana. Was there anything that surprised you that you didn't expect or you learnt that you weren't literally what surprised did you have anything surprising you this year is my question and actually let's chuck it to Michelle first just as a just as a bit of pressure for our for my co-host there did anything (laughs) surprise you you? uh yes Uh, yeah I think um I think that knowing how tired nurses have been uh you know in our in our specialities throughout Europe uh, and knowing the pressures that people have been working under again you know this is not something that's exclusive to uh, my hospital my country uh, my continent Um, so the thing that surprised me was how much energy and enthusiasm everybody everybody with had for the meeting and during the meeting and that energy we said it before uh that energy kept going and going and going until the very last moments of the meeting and so uh so yes that's um that's something that surprised me um that i that i hadn't hadn't been quite prepared for um and i i don't think i I'd, I'd also been prepared for uh how how emotional that would make me feel actually and um yeah so that was a surprise anything anything for you guys actually i had the same experience as yeah. you said michelle as, especially at the very last moments when people came to you and say it was so nice to be here to hear mm-hmm. you to meet you to talk get inspired by you to hear about the possibilities uh, the fa- with the vacancies in the committees and all the learning experience. And I realized that at the last moment, that that is the importance of being live together with each other and share our experiences. And it's so important because our we have a common good. That's the, the, the practice in our clinical, our clinical practice, the patients, but our practices differ in our developments differ so we can support each other so much and that's so important. Mm -hmm. I totally agree Hilda. Um, It's so inspiring but also the the content and knowledge but also beside uh, you you go outside a session you talk to each other and then also oh uh, I have a lot of students coming with me oh you can also come once to the Netherlands or two so it's you get informal connections or they say oh we do it like this or even in questions at the session so I think that's that was very um, um hopeful also to, to share in an informal way all those things. And then uh, another topic, but that's perhaps a little bit more something else, but the, the, the most people told me that it was very, the, the topics were so diverse, like um, we are looking back and saying, okay, what will we take back as well for junior nurses as senior nurses. So we had so for everybody something we had a lot of topics and the app was very user friendly it was yes. you will not miss topics because you could yeah scroll it was and that was uh, yeah it was the first time that i saw that it was so easy to get the program because there's so much at the same time so that's that was for me uh, an, uh, a very uh, good um, impression uh, if I can say a word about that, uh, Marike, um, I received uh, 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 from a nurses, a French nurses, um, very excellent uh, feedback about the program, and they um, it was very interesting for them, and they didn't feel the need to attend any physician session because the nurses program was great for them. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> And uh, what surprised me uh, uh, for me it was the number of nurses uh, attendees 
in this meeting um, and every day uh, until the last session I mean the room was uh, full uh, for the closing session and I was very happy to see people so happy to be there um, in spite of our um, daily difficulties um, so it's very nice yeah there's, there's always some teething isn't there yeah yeah i um i wanted to ask you particularly thomas um and actually this may also be uh for you Marek, but about the translation so i think it might be the first time that we had the entire meeting fully translated in all of our parallel rooms for nurses the, the translations were not available for physicians but they were available for nurses mm -hmm. And uh, before in the past, we were able to do that just for the education day, which had always been a day where we mostly encouraged nurses from the host country to attend, although it was free for uh, nurses elsewhere to attend as well. And so I want to ask you what sort of a difference you thought that made to the ability and the access for your nurses mm -hmm. to be able to enjoy the meeting. Well, it changed everything because um, with the uh, translation, um, the content uh, are accessible to everyone. And um, the language barrier is always a difficulty, yeah. maybe especially for French nurses. <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the expert. <laughs> but the, 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 the translation was usually appreciated. And yeah. sometimes it was kind of fun because it was a difficult job to translate. Yes. <laughs> and my colleagues say, oh, you made the, the laughing with the translators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, it's a very good question about translations because we have a lot of nurses, a lot of nationalities. And for the doctor's session, they are more used to have it in English. Mm -hmm. but I think also there it's important that we grow as a professional and also there I remember your the first congress colleagues are also saying if it's in another language it's really impressive but I think also there it's important that we see that people are growing and in the beginning it's oh my god but then I think after a couple of times they see also okay um perhaps it, it can in English. So I think both things, it, it's important to have both to think about it, but also in future to think, okay, how can we grow as a profession also? Yeah, yeah. I think to, I think to have a chat uh, in another language, you know, we can do that, can't we? We can, uh, we, we can talk, we can, we can speak, we can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But when you are listening to the scientific content uh, that's being presented on the slides and maybe the speakers have an accent or they speak quite fast. It can be even more difficult to understand without the translation. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might all need a translation for Scottish accents <laughs> next year. <laughs> I will, I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to volunteer for that one. No. Some I, of the Scottish accents are strong. Yeah, yeah. but that's also nice about yeah. EBMT, yeah. but we have respect for each other's yeah. language. Yeah. And also we have respect if somebody is not speaking as well as uh, we hope we should do even yeah. ourselves as we give a presentation. So I think also there it's important that we have respect and that some people are talking mm -hmm. yeah, better English, but uh, also you see in the, the nursing sessions, a lot of nurses who are not used, they read uh, more easily English, but if they have to speak, it's more difficult. So I think also there, it's you feel that EBMT is really um, making um, some um, yeah efforts to help them and to uh, to grow. Yeah, yeah I, I really saw a nice picture yesterday about this aspect. <clears throat> Maybe I can uh, quote it here. Yes, it was, it were yeah. two flowers talking to each other and one said to the other, I love your details. And then the others replied, thanks, I feel like I'm blooming way slower than you do. Where the others answered, we are different flowers, silly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really mm. illustrating how it is. We are all different and we are, can 
yeah, we can work together to to as for a nice garden with yeah. different flowers, with different yeah. experiences, different input. Yeah, definitely. And and the the fact that you know we translation of textbooks is occurring now and um promoting that one there for you Michelle and also you know even um for patients so with the Tessa care session um telling us about the website the uh, the motion comic that's used for patients for immunotherapy mm. um we'll, we'll add the link to the the podcast comments but the fact that it's already in English Dutch and French with Spanish German and Mandarin being sorted as well that's it's amazing and and yeah you know we need to be more inclusive inclusivity is is important I think my my biggest surprise I've said it at the beginning of the podcast recording actually is just the sheer size of it and yes you can you can you can just isolate yourself down to just nurses stuff but even then there wasn't just one room full of nursing things there was topics all over the place there was multiple rooms you could go to so um as it as I said to Michelle at the beginning, that was my first ever face-to-face -face annual meeting and it's huge. And it's, yeah, it's, it's gobsmacking. Hello, uh, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and where it is that you work? Hi, so I'm Charlotte blacklock Lum. I'm a lead nurse for apheresis and for NHS Blood and Transplant and I'm based in Leeds. Fabulous. And what's been your favorite thing about EBMT 23 so far? Uh, well, I love UBMT. It's my second time. Um, I went when it was back in Marseille, and I just love the networking and seeing how um, different countries do different things in transplant and how we all do the same job but quite differently. So, absolutely. And what are you planning to take back to your area from EBMT to pass on to your colleagues? Um, I think I would really like to take back the new um, Blood Matters podcast, which is available to nurses. So I'm going to take that back to my team, definitely. And also the fact that the EBMT Nurses Handbook 2nd Edition is now available for everybody online. So I'll, I'll take that back and I'm sure it'll be really useful to my colleagues. It's got a dedicated apheresis section, which I saw earlier. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with everyone. And it's free. Thank you so much, Charlotte. So earlier on, we were talking about nursing one nurses. I mean, Tomas, you mentioned that your nurse, some of your nurses were like, "How do we get involved and how do we do things?" So I think this is the possibly the right time to plug a couple of things, um, positions that are available and coming up. So um, as Hilda has stepped down as as chair of the pediatrics committee, there is a vacancy there. I don't know, Hilda. Do you want to do you want to take a couple of seconds to tell people maybe why why they, why should they go for it? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, people can apply as they are a pediatric stem cell transplantation nurse, and it's really a, a nice opportunity for them to to join this committee because you are able to collaborate with other pediatric nurses um, in the committee, not only but also when you have the meetings with pediatric nurses and. Mostly they are quite smaller than this big event as the annual meeting, but they are so important for the networking aspect and also for sharing experience specifically on pediatric topics. So that's really a, a, an opportunity, I think. And within the committee, you can do different aspects. We prepare the annual meeting, but we also prepare uh, the, the specific pediatric meetings and we really abstracts for the annual meeting with the uh, pediatric topics. But also we work on research projects together. So I would really encourage people when they are wondering if this could be something for them to approach us and so we can have a chat with them to, to talk it through. Lovely. And um, Pediatrics is not the only committee looking for a member. So I'm going to move on to Marek because you are in the scientific committee that helps put together all of the, the wonderful um, agendas. So what what should we tell our our adult i guess our our adult group what why why should we be why should they be looking at maybe joining the committee uh if you want to join the the ebmt and and if you have um if you wanted to take part make part of the the program also for the ebmt because I think the first time I was there on the scientific meeting, it was like, oh my God, it's so amazing what to make a program like this. So that's nice that we have so many people from different countries. Okay, we have to look for a speaker. Ah, I know somebody, oh no, he cannot. So it's a very dynamic something. And it's as Hilda said, we are in small groups. It's really nice networking. 
and for me it's a little bit like not it's international also so i'm working home going to your job and then for me ebmt or such a committee it's a little bit like breaking out of the hospital it's like a little bit um your scope is broader for me i need uh, sometimes an international scope and for me it's like oh it's it's amazing and and there you can also how do you at your hospital also um and also for your it's not only your um uh, professional growth but also for your personal growth it's it's yeah. um I, I like it amazing um michelle do you want to hand over or promote the other two um positions that are available yeah sure so yeah just i mean i guess just to add just a little bit to uh to both of what hilda and murray have have said about the committees you know we have uh it's hard work you know it is a commitment for people, uh, there is a bit of work that needs to be done outside of your normal work time. So in your own time, there's a bit of traveling, you know, that's required. Uh, some of the committees will meet twice a year. Some of them will meet three times a year, uh, depending on, on which committee. And some committees are a little bit smaller than others. Uh, but when you work in a committee as a committee member, you know, you come together with real like minded professionals and, you know, there are no barriers that exist between us when we get into a room. And that's one of the really magical things that that you get from from this experience. And also you get to learn from uh, from those colleagues as well. So the paediatric committee, as Hilda steps out of the chair role, we have a, a colleague, uh, Ida Bremner, who steps into the chair role. So we have a vacancy as a, a committee member. And uh, Marek, who's uh, now uh, stepped into the chair of the scientific committee role, we have that uh, scientific committee member. So we get together as a scientific committee, uh, uh, myself and Daphne Hutt, who is secretary of the EBMT nurses group, uh, we're honorary members of the scientific committee and we get together obviously at the annual meeting uh, and we get together post annual congress to have a kind of recap and review of, uh, of, uh, of, of the evaluations and of the programme. Uh, and the processes uh, that that go into creating the meeting so we can always improve. So we're always looking for improvements. So if anybody has any suggestions uh, for ways we can improve our nurses uh, meeting uh, or uh, some of the other meetings that we have, we are always happy to hear from people. We then meet her uh, again later in the year because Scientific Committee is also responsible for putting together the programme, the one day programme for the international training course, which is held in Barcelona. And again, we do that uh, together with the Scientific Committee. Uh, and that happens in September. I think we've got the eight dates of the 8th to 10th of September for that. So if you register for that meeting, you have a one day nurses program and a three days of trainee level program as well. Uh, so there's actually something for everybody and it's great for nurses to be able to attend that. Uh, and registration uh, fees are, are very small in comparison to the annual meeting and it's a yeah. small size event. And then later on in the year, we have uh, our annual education meeting at the end of September, which this year will be held in Madrid. And if you attended the annual meeting in Paris, you'll have seen the QR codes and uh, taking you to the draft programme for that. So programme's not finalised yet, uh, but but it's, you know, what you see as a draft gives you an idea of, of what we're going to be offering you uh, in that meeting. And that's a collaboration with our research committee, local organising committee and the nurses group board. So, again, lots and lots of opportunities for people uh, within that, either by joining their national group and working with their national group or by joining one of our EBMT nurses group committees. So the other two opportunities that we have are working party uh, nurse representative positions. 
uh, and you can be uh, the named nurse with a working party uh, in an area of interest to you. And those, again, will be advertised alongside the uh, Scientific Committee and Paediatric Committee positions. Uh, I think will be uh, early to mid-May when the adverts will go out for those and we'll keep them open for about four weeks. Working party nurses, we have a uh, lymphoma working party uh, vacancy, and we also have a vacancy for the brand new haemoglobinopathy working party, uh, where a nurse uh, with an interest in haemoglobinopathies uh, and transplantation and has some experience of transplantation uh, will be uh, able to join that committee. Uh, the applications come through our EBMT nurses group so that we retain a really strong link with our working party nurses uh, in order to be able to support them with the work that they would like to do within the working party of their choice. Thanks for that summary um, of the what what it would be involving. Um, and Hiya, could you just tell me your name and where you work? Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Giorgia, Giorgia Coppi, and I work in uh, Italy in a unit uh, bone marrow transplant uh, at uh, Istituto Nazionale Tumori Milan. Lovely Milan. Um, Georgia, Georgia, you were one of our grant awards, so you got some money to come to the conference this year. Um, what's been your favourite thing about this conference? Uh, everything is okay. Um, it's amazing, a section, a nursing group, of course, and I appreciate no? um, the um, hospitality the lettering, the easy mode to, to do lettering. Amazing. And how would you get your colleagues to come to one of our other conferences? What would you say to them? I will come back with a, a big smile on my face, of course, and uh, I must tell, uh, tell them to come to see the um, it is an amazing place to, to, to be. That's great. Thank you. What I would ask is, as people who have been to conferences and meetings, why should we tell our nursing colleagues to go to these meetings? What, what will they gain from it? Um, why should they go? Even if they don't go to annual meeting, which is huge, maybe they want to go to something that they feel is very, very relevant to their role or to uh, a personal interest in terms of transplantation so why should they go may i think may start i think in line with what Mareike already said personal and professional development is an important aspect uh, in going to uh, going to uh, international conference because you can build on that definitely but also you will be very much inspired after such meetings and you will learn yes. a lot of new colleagues uh, you you will get a lot of new experience and knowledge um, scientifically based but also yeah I think the networking aspect is also very important so if you want to be inspired and look a bit out of the box and more broader than your own center and also broader than your own country please join us and, and experience how it is and you will be tired afterwards of course but the inspiration is far much bigger your your brain has worked so hard during these hasn't it that your Definitely. physical body might not be that tired, but your synapses. Yes, in terms of balance, it's really outrageous. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, go further. Uh, what Hilda says also, uh, everybody has also a lot of education on national levels. Uh, we all know, but uh, therefore at EBMT, um, we know also there you have a really topic about stem cell transplantation, about the newly um, uh, treatments, because it's in, especially in stem cell transplantation, it's going so fast. So that's why it's important that we uh, move our nurses for, they, they also know it, we, we see it every day in practice that, it's, uh, that we have so many new treatments, so many new trials. Uh, nurses ask what, what is this how does it work so that's why it's so important to get them there to see okay that's that's because sometimes it's not always that easy and I think also we must admit that they are tough times with people not 
as many people always on the work floor. So also yeah. there, it's important to keep them and to give time to educate because that's important that nurses can grow, can grow professional and that we give them time to uh, go to a conference and that we work together also in our own centers. Okay, this year, who can go? It's also our task, I think, to stimulate them and to help them to to do an abstract because also there we see, oh, it's too busy. Oh, so that's why it's good that we have now, Michelle, the terms are a little bit longer now to supply your uh, abstracts or if we can do it together with the team. But I think we have to, we have also um, our um, task to, to uh, move them, to stay, make them involved, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And abstracts, um, as Monica said, marry up to the submission dates now, marry up to the physician submission dates for the end of the year that are, they're all over the website if you're interested in submitting as is some guidance on how to write an abstract, how to present, um, especially if you weren't at EBMT, because there was a lovely session on that on the last day. Um, Toma, you, you've hosted us. So why, why, why should people come to not just to see lovely Paris, but why else? <laughs> uh, because it's an excellent way to learn new practices. Um, yes. And like I say during the opening session, it is very, very stimulating. Um, uh, it's, well, it's encourages um, reflections. Uh, and after that, we're going back home with new project and feel confident. <laughs> Mm -hmm. confidence yes that's mm -hmm. such a good point mm -hmm. that's such a good yeah absolutely and because um, people I'm... are lovely <laughs> <laughs> you've not been to scotland yet no i joke <laughs> i jest scotland is very very friendly very friendly country um all right can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh where you work and what your role is please Sure, my name's Rose. I work at the Royal Marsden in London and Sutton in the United Kingdom. And my role is lead clinical nurse specialist for stem cell transplant and cellular therapy. What's, your, uh, what's been your favourite thing about EBMT 23 so far? I think the wide range of talks from uh, professionals of different backgrounds. Um, I've actually really enjoyed the advanced care planning and palliative care sessions this year. Um, which isn't the first thing you think about when you go to a transplant conference, um, but a particular soundbite that really resonated with me and that I'll take back to practice is about the timing of advanced care planning. And that was a quote in um, Richard Tower's session on Sunday on the nursing programme. And he was talking about the timing of advanced care planning and he said, and the, and the critics of um, palliative care in transplant. And what he said was, it's always too soon unless it's too late and i thought that was really that was a really powerful message and i'll certainly be taking that back to practice with me very thought provoking um, one more quick question why should nurses come to these conferences in the future lots and lots and lots of reasons um, with EBMT there are events throughout the year so if you can't come to the annual meeting um, wherever that is in the spring there are other meetings that happen later in the year so of course you can't have your whole team going to the annual meeting because there'll be no one left to run your service um, but maybe one or two of you could go to the transplant meeting in September in Barcelona which is certainly something that we're looking to do um, in my team so there are meetings throughout the year um, you get to meet other nurses from similar backgrounds, share practice, um, network. I mean, I've met so many people at these meetings that then I can just ping an email off to them if I've got a question. It's, it's, it's really helpful. And obviously, I haven't mentioned the learning. <laughs> um, the learning is the um, primary reason. And it's lovely to be able to do that in person after um, the last few years being virtual. Lovely. Thanks so much for your chat, Rose. Okay, I think we're we're wrapping up this fireside chat. I've been sitting here with my cup of coffee that's kept me going throughout. Um, wishing we actually had a real fire, but maybe next time. And um, I guess what I want to ask is, does anybody have any final thoughts they want to share before we say thank you very much for our guests for joining us today? I think that I would just say uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, thank you to Thomas, Marek, 
Hilda, Emma, for joining us for the fireside chat. Uh, it's been great to be able to get together again so soon after the annual meeting and uh, and share our, our thoughts and our impressions and our highlights uh, from that meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us then, guys. And um, hopefully we'll see you at a conference very, very soon. Yeah. That'd be so nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Tom Whitehead. I'm Emily's dad, and I want to tell all of the oncology nurses out there that um, you are the number one way that people are finding these new, less toxic treatments. So we're very thankful. All the nurses we had were like family to us, and keep up the great work that you do, and we will keep sending patients your way. Well, that wraps up our fireside chat, which was our slightly different construct to the podcast this time round. Um, so for anybody that is interested in looking at any of the other educational events, go on to the EBMT website under, funnily enough, educational events, and you'll have a little look of the of the remaining um, calendar events for the whole of 2023, I think are still on there, aren't they, Michelle, for the, yeah. for the rest of the year. Um, we haven't put Glasgow 2024 up just yet. Just uh, keep watching this space. Um, Thanks very much for being my co-host again, Michelle. It's been you are wonderful. Welcome, and for everybody out there that has joined us, um, if you didn't get the opportunity to come up to me during annual meeting and give me some of your ideas for podcast topics, you can get in touch via social media. So through the Twitter at EBMT Nurses or through the website. Um, and tune in next month to listen to our Myeloma Now and Beyond podcast episode that we recorded with Dr. Graham Jackson and Micah Darauta. It was an absolutely fantastic chat. And I think you'll really, really enjoy that and looking at the sort of future scope for myeloma treatment because it's, it's, it's very exciting, isn't it, Michelle? It is very exciting indeed, and it really was a, a great a pod to record. So uh, really looking forward to receiving some feedback about that one when it goes out. And on that note, if you have any feedback for us, as well as ideas, you know where to go, because I have already told you. Um, once again, I'd like to thank our guests for joining us today. I would like to thank Michelle for being my wonderful host as always. I would like to thank the background team that help edit this and make us sound like professional podca podcast hosts, which we are not. Um, maybe one day, maybe one day. And, uh, you know, I have to, as I do every single time, thank the listeners for joining us on our little podcast in the world that's growing every single time we produce. So thank you very much for joining us and uh, stay safe. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.